Shamoon malware is back, Facebook exposes private photos for millions of users, and Supermicro did an audit to prove their innocence. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morrison. This is ThreatWire for December 18th, 2018, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Real quick, I would like to give a special shout out to my newest Patreon supporters this week, including Dennis, Abram, Mahabad, Pofun, Mark, and Casey. And if you are interested in supporting ThreatWire and unlocking access to a slew of perks, hit up patreon.com slash threatwire and now onto the news. Back in 2012 and again in 2016, a strain of malware called Shamoon was discovered wreaking havoc on industrial and infrastructure networks. Saudi Aramco, which is Saudi Arabia's biggest oil producer, was targeted in these attacks. Shamoon malware was used to wipe data off of their servers and replace it with political propaganda like a burning US flag and photos of deceased persons. And in 2012, the attack wiped data off 30,000 PCs. Well, Shanmoon is now back in the news this week with an attack on an Italian oil and gas contractor called Saipem, who specializes in drilling and pipeline design. Saipem is one of Aramco's main contractual partners, and Shamoon malware wiped 10% of the PCs in their networks. Now, this occurred on December 8th and 9th, and Saipem Engineering Energy released a statement on Monday the 10th regarding the attack. Also, just so happens on the 10th, the new strain of Shamoon malware was uploaded to VirusTotal, a website used to share malware and virus examples with the security community. The uploads occurred from IPs in Italy and India, which leads some to believe that the uploads were from Saipem themselves, since their affected machines reside in those two countries, as well as a few others. Now, while workstations were affected in this attack, internal control systems were not actually impacted. Saipem believes that the entry point was via RDP, which is the remote desktop protocol. Now, many InfoSec researchers were curious about that trigger date. That is to say, the date that the malware was hard written to start attacking a network. The date was hard coded as December 7th, 2017, long before it actually started attacking Saipem. Researchers believe that this means the malware was old, but only just now discovered, or it was pre-built and ready to deploy in advance of a larger campaign, the latter being the most likely. This would allow the malware to immediately be triggered once it's delivered onto a network. Now, what makes this malware different from the strains that we've seen previously? Well, it didn't include any target-specific hard-coded credentials, and it contained no propaganda images, and it overwrites clean data with garbage data, so it seems to be kind of scaled back. It's not clear who uploaded the Shamoon samples or who is behind the attacks, but any industrial cyber attack is of concern. Saipem has taken steps to remediate the attack and are working with authorities to investigate the issue. In a news bulletin posted by Facebook on Friday, the company explained that a photo API bug that may have affected anyone who granted third-party app permission to access their photos was recently fixed. Now, while that problem was fixed, it did create a much bigger issue. Some third-party apps may have had access to a much broader range of photos for up to 12 days, from September 13th all the way through September 25th. Facebook discovered and remedied the bug on September 25th. According to TechCrunch, the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner of the EU was notified on November 22nd following the EU's guidelines. Now, under the GDPR, Facebook has to notify the EU of data breaches within 72 hours. And since November 22nd was two months after discovery, their reasoning is that the commissioner was notified once the bug was considered reportable after Facebook's investigation. Now, in the bulletin by Tomer Barr on their developer news page, he shared how Facebook grants permission to third-party apps requesting access to photos. Usually, those only get access to photos shared on a timeline. The API bug gave third-party developers access to photos also shared on Marketplace or on Facebook Stories, as well as photos that were uploaded to Facebook but never published. So how could they have access to photos that were never published? Well, Facebook stores these drafts for three days just in case you want to come back to the post and you want to finish uploading them in a later period. Facebook did determine this affected 6.8 million users and 1,500 apps by 876 developers. Barr said that the apps were ones that Facebook had approved and users affected were ones that had authorized access to photos. 
Facebook will be rolling out new tools for developers this week to give them a better scope of information about this bug, and they will also be working with developers to delete photos from impacted users. Facebook will be notifying affected users as well with a notification on the platform. Now, if you don't want to wait for a notification, you can click on the help link in the description below this video, which will take you directly to a page that can determine whether or not you were affected. Lastly, Facebook does recommend that users log into any applications that may have had access to check what kind of photo access they currently have. You can check what apps has permissions to access Facebook content through your Facebook settings. It's unknown whether developers knew that they had access to private photos or if this bug was actually abused by any of the third-party applications. Facebook has had data breaches or bugs every single month since at least September of this year, with this one being the newest discovery. So is it ironic that this bug was found on the same day, September 25th, that 30 million users were impacted by a security breach as well on the platform? Huh, I wonder why we're just now hearing about this one. Hmm. Way back in October, a huge story was published by Bloomberg Businessweek detailing extravagant microchips and embedded technology that was being hidden by Chinese spies and gadgets shipped internationally by almost 30 companies, including Apple and Amazon. The story was explosive, but it was not backed up by any credible or reliable data or audits, just anonymous sources. The tech companies involved completely denied the claims and they refuted them. Supermicro, the chip company at the center of the story, also denied the story's claims. On December 11th, Supermicro CEO and President Charles Liang, as well as the Chief Compliance Officer and Chief Product Officer, all released a letter to customers stating that an audit performed showed no malicious hardware in Supermicro products. Now this is a San Jose, California-based company, and they stated that the reports were wrongly alleging that bad actors inserted malicious hardware into their manufacturing process. According to the letter, Supermicro hired a third-party investigations firm who was unnamed to do an audit and test their motherboards, including the ones from the Bloomberg article, newer boards, and ones purchased by the companies referenced. Reuters reported that the audit was done by investigative firm Nardello & Co. The audit performed found no evidence of malicious chips on the boards, which Supermicro stated was no surprise. The company also clarified that they test products at every single step of manufacturing. They test every layer and they require employees to be on site with assembly contractors and they safeguard against tampering by not allowing any employee or contractor to have unrestricted access to the complete board design, as well as doing regular audits. The letter repeats that no government, customer, or super micro employee has ever found malicious hardware on their products, and it ends with a link to a very fancy video explaining their security process. Now, while there is always a possibility that something could be missed during an audit, it is fair to say that hardware is the hardest thing to compromise, with the easiest, obviously, being humans or software attacks. Without evidence, we have no reason to believe the claims being made in the Bloomberg article. Thank you so much to everyone for helping us reach that goal on Patreon to do a monthly live Q&A for all patrons. And if you are interested in getting access to that along with a slew of other extras, even if it's just one or two bucks a month, hit that button to become a Patreon supporter because it all helps and it shows me that you appreciate the work that I'm putting in for this show each and every week. Also, a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sending in their adorable fur baby photos. I love them, keep them coming, they're awesome. They make me happy. They're so cute. Hit that subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page as well. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Happy holidays.